Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today is day one of the Halloween week of videos. Basically, what I'm doing is I am putting out four videos this week, and then one on Halloween, all being horror movie reviews, because it is Halloween. Today's film, kicking it all off, is Carnival of Souls. Now, Carnival of Souls was a low-budget film from the early 60s. It cost about $33,000. These guys who made educational films and commercials locally in Kansas, and they wanted to do something a little more artistic about this church organist, and she is in a drag race. She was not driving. While they're driving, her car goes off a bridge and falls into the ocean, and she's the only one to survive. After this traumatic experience, she decides to leave town and go somewhere else, and then she is haunted by the ghosts of the other people who died in the car. And she routinely feels like no one can hear her. They'll do this weird, like, watery kind of effect and then suddenly no one knows she's there. It's a very spooky and creepy movie. The score is really phenomenal. It's kind of mixed a little lower than most scores, but it's this organ music which really complements the film because she's a church organist. Even though I've seen this a couple times, when she'd see some of the spirits, would be like, ah. When you get into it, this film really can surprise you and can really spook you out. Most people knew this as a B-movie. It was originally marketed as but then they started airing it on late night TV and it kind of got a big cult following. When it originally came out, it bombed. Like, nobody saw it. Something that's really endearing about the low budget is how much of this film was done without sound, which is pretty unusual. <laughs> Visually, you're really good at telling a story without having someone spell it out for you or tell you in dialogue. You really have to watch this film. It does remind me a lot of Detour, which is another kind of B-film that is really excellent at being a B-film. This is a black and white film. They colorized it, but colorization always looks like shit. I don't care how good of a job you do it just looks shit like ugh. And the acting's not great i think the overall film is really worth it it's really kind of has this bizarre vibe and especially because the main character is really antisocial. like she doesn't really like talking to people she's a church organist who doesn't really care much for religion and usually when people are haunted they're like telling their friends oh like i've been haunted or something but this is so isolating because she's so alone and she doesn't really like anybody or trust anybody with all these spirits coming at her a lot of people call this early psychological horror i also thought the lead actress looks a lot like Ming Stoll. I don't think they're related at all. There's this car scene where she's driving the next town and she keeps seeing the spirits and things. That was... Whoa. When they filmed this, they intended this as a B film. It's a small, strange little movie. Really, like, sit down and watch it. It's only like 78 minutes or something like that. It's on instant Netflix. It's the only film the director who directed this ever directed. It's a really good ghost story. If you have seen Carnival of Souls and you would like to talk about it, then comment below down there in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And as I said before, there will be three videos after this that will come out this week that are all horror movie reviews, and then there will be one on Saturday. I just like to do a bunch of videos on Halloween. I did it last year. I'm doing it again. And maybe I'll do it again next year. Who knows? But yeah, so see you tomorrow. The lead uh, actress, uh, Candace Hilligas? Candace Hilligas? Some. She wrote a sequel, which was never made. It's the only film that the director that directed it directed. That makes sense, right? Uh, which is pretty unusual. Thanks, Buster.